It's that time again! Welcome to Creative Freedom Season 6, Empowerment for Creative Entrepreneurs, where can-do inspiration and how-to education collide to help you own your dreams without selling your soul. I go away on hiatus and the whole world goes to hell in a handbasket. Now, if you only watch the video show, you've missed a lot. Our podcast ran a special 20 episode series through April. And despite the roller coaster that COVID-19 brought to the world, I've had one of my best years on record, both personally and professionally. I got remarried. We bought a house. I feel so fancy in my new studio. So we're going to get rocking on one of our best seasons yet. And probably the biggest news of the year, our presidential election. Now, regardless of your opinion on the candidates, and I know we've all got opinions, this election was a momentous breakthrough event for our country. Kamala Harris, like every person in the world, is far from perfect. And yet this is something women everywhere need to be excited about. It's an opening. Much like when Roger Bannister ran the first mile under four minutes, she just showed the world what's possible. That yes, we can have a woman of color in the White House. And that to me is very much what we're about here at Creative Freedom. Going after your dreams and defining success on your own terms. Let me also add, this year has been all kinds of wackadoodle. So I figured it was important to give at least a small recap of what's been going on during our hiatus. 2020 has been a year of big, impactful changes, some of which we wanted, some of which we could have never imagined. And yet here we are learning to navigate those changes together. Okay, now that we've got that covered, let's dig into episode one. For years now, you've heard me say, own your dreams without selling your soul. And not selling your soul is probably one of the biggest reasons you became a creative entrepreneur, if you're like most of the folks that I've met over the years. We hear these stories about artists that sell out or people who do something just for the money, and we get kind of upset about it. Now, don't get me wrong. I think most of us who are in a creative field have felt the pressure to do a project for the exposure or because the income meant the difference between keeping the lights on and being homeless. There's no shame in that. I'm taking on clients I'd rather have turned away. And it only firmed my resolve to get myself into a position where I don't have to do that again. And it's a sad state of our society that most of us have been there at one time or another in our careers. And it doesn't have to be that old way. My experience, and that of many of my clients, is that the more we align our goals to our values, the easier it is to feel the success that we crave and to actually experience success now instead of waiting for it to arrive someday in the future. As I've said before, success is a destination and you're already there. So if you don't like what success looks like today, it's time for something different. And that's part of what happened during our hiatus. I took a long look at where things were falling out of alignment for me and what needed to shift if I wanted to feel successful in ways that mattered to me. And I recognized it was time for something different. So we opened up the incubator to be able to serve more people. We've started migrating all our courses and programs into a new learning platform. I'm developing a group program. I've hired several team members to help me focus my workload and deliver an even better experience for you. As I looked at how we were doing what we were doing, I realized that this was something that I hadn't really discussed before. Now, I've talked about and announced changes in the past, but I've not really talked about why. Sometimes it's a financial decision to do something that makes good financial sense, but most of the time, the changes that I'm making are about bringing the business more and more in alignment with who I am and what matters to me. So if somewhere along your journey, you find that your business is becoming less and less true to you, or if you're wanting to start a business that's true to your creative nature right from the start, then ta-da, this episode is for you. And by ta-da, I mean T-A-D-A. A simple way for you to remember how to build a soulful business that is true to you. The T stands for trust, as in trust yourself. A colleague of mine once taught me that your body is like a smoke detector and it sends you warning signals all the time if you're paying attention. So let's take a few seconds right now. Just scan your body. Check your breath. What do you notice? What feels right? What feels amiss? What do you need to adjust to be more present to our conversation right now? 
Go ahead and do that now. Pause the recording if you must. I'll be here when you get back. There. Is that better? A client of mine had surgery and found it difficult to sit through our coaching session because of the discomfort. So when we checked in to see what their body really needed, they excused themselves from the room and came back with a pillow. Took a total of maybe three minutes. But those precious minutes of really listening and trusting that your body really does know what it needs and then providing it are priceless. Humans have evolved over centuries and our survival skills are on point. Our bodies will tell us when things don't feel right, but if we ignore those signs often enough, we stop trusting ourselves. And we stop trusting ourselves with everything. Self-doubt becomes our standard operating procedure, and that's not your natural wiring. So you've essentially rewired yourself to ignore your own instinct. The good news is that you can reset yourself too. It takes effort, and you can start with small micro habits that you build up over time. One of those, begin by decreasing your input. My coach has me sit and be still for 15 minutes a day doing nothing. Not trying to meditate, just being still. So I sit in my office and I look out the window at my backyard with no particular agenda. I just sit and notice being present to me without trying to work at it or think too hard. And the first few times I had the itches, bitches, and twitches like crazy. And I've been a regular meditator for years, but I couldn't meditate. I just had to be still, decrease my input so that I could be with what was going on in my body. Overconsumption of information when we are looking for answers leads to burnout. And linear infusions, I am talking to you because this is something that's a pattern for you. You need to be selective about the channels and the platforms that you choose to pay attention to. Limit your intake of stimulus. One of my clients regularly limits screen time by taking no tech days during the month. And you don't have to eliminate anything that you don't want to. Just recognize that too much stimulus of any kind not only distracts you from what's going on with your mind and body, but it also disconnects you from it. Then at first, it might create all kinds of feelings and physical sensations that don't feel so great. But that's just your body trying to get a handle on reconnecting to you. You may find yourself second guessing yourself out of habit. But here's the thing. You already have everything that you need in the moment to handle whatever's coming at you. So take a breath, lean into your discomfort, listen to your body and let it tell you what it needs. And then, and this is a big one, honor it. Even if it seems silly or trivial, don't ignore it or brush it off. Really listen to and find a way to honor what your body wants from you. And yeah, you may have to do some negotiating sometimes. If your body wants to sleep all day and you've got deadlines, you may need to negotiate for an hour of nap now and then more sleep when the work gets done. Just listen to your body. It knows. The more you practice honoring yourself and what your body needs, the easier it becomes to trust yourself. Now, this is something most chaotic creatives do naturally, but even they can have moments of self-doubt when they're venturing into new territory. So remember that you've got gifts your world needs. You are great at them and serving your world does not have to come at the expense of your well-being. You can build a business that aligns with what you want, who you are, your values and beliefs. You don't have to adopt someone else's script or blueprint for success, including mine. Trust yourself. You've got this. And if you remain unconvinced, let me introduce you to A, which stands for awareness, specifically self-awareness, because it's easier to trust yourself when you have clarity around what you're good at, what you want, and what you don't want in life and business. I talk a lot about being ruthlessly honest with yourself, and that means dropping the judgment and just having an awareness of what's true for you. If you're currently operating your business, or your life for that matter, in a way that isn't working, because it's what you're supposed to be doing or what you should be doing or because it pays the bills, then it's no wonder your soul's not into it. Tap into what you really want and start to go for that. Now, Fusions, hear me on this. You don't have to pick one thing, but you do need to lead with one thing at a time to make it easier for people to understand the breadth of your awesomeness. The example that I use all the time is the Eagles, that rock supergroup that's made of extremely talented musicians who are all solo superstars in their own right. When they all come together, they don't all sing lead at the same time. One guy sings lead, and then when that song's over, the next guy sings lead, and everybody else supports that lead singer to make sure that that performance is the best that it can be. Now, I firmly believe that if a grown-ass man can make a living unboxing action figures on YouTube, there is a market for what you want to do. You just have to find it. What do you really want to be doing? Go do that. If you're not sure or 
maybe you're older and feeling a little gun shy about things, that's cool. I've known many folks who've been down that road. After years of doing what you should be doing, here I come saying, just do what you want. And maybe that feels overwhelming or maybe it just feels impossible. Please notice, I did not say, jump in head first without doing your due diligence. Mm -mm. Instead, give yourself permission to experiment, to just play and to see what comes up. Create some space in your calendar and your budget to be able to try some new things without a lot of pressure around them and trying to force them to make them produce money right away. And here's something else for you to consider. For most creatives, money isn't even the motivating factor. It's necessary to pay bills and whatnot, but it's not the big why behind what you do. It's the thing that you want to be known for that actually motivates you. I mean, making money is great. It truly is. And if you're only in it for the money, you're probably going to feel like you've got a job and not true creative freedom. Oh, I hear you now. How am I supposed to find the time when everybody's at home with all these distractions that are taking me off task? Like, I've, I've heard it, okay? So maybe it's time to step into the D, delegation. Begin by taking a look at your tasks, inside and outside your business, for the things that suck the joy out of you. The easiest ones to delegate will probably be the ones that you can do in your sleep, but you don't love, okay? They're the easiest because you can train somebody quickly and then you can pick it back up if something is off the rails. Check the blog for a slew of posts on how and what to delegate, even with no budget. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean it's for you to do. It just means you've got experience doing it. Now, if you're good at it and you enjoy it, then by all means, keep it on your plate. If not, it might be time to start looking at ways to get it off your plate. Get some help for some clarity, okay? That could be asking a friend or a family member, a coach, a consultant, reading a blog post, just to see where to begin. Even assessments like the Creative Freedom Entrepreneur type quiz or the Fix This Next assessment can be great places to start and they don't cost anything. Just hop over to the website, creativefreedomshow.com, and learn more. Your answers are going to give you all the clarity that you need to take the very next step. Take back your power by delegating the tasks that don't align with your strengths. And before we hit the last A, let me also remind you that just like a smoke detector sends you signals, your body alone isn't going to give you all the information you need to make decisions. Chaotics very often say, well, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not doing it which can actually prevent you from doing the very things that you need to be doing simply because it's hard or because you've got some resistance to it. So like a smoke detector, you need to check for other factors as well. When the smoke alarm goes off in my kitchen, I don't run screaming out of the house and call the fire department. I check to see what's what. <laughs> maybe I'm cleaning the stove and it's a little smoky in the house. Or maybe the kitchen is ablaze and it's time to call the fire department. The smoke alarm goes off either way. So it's up to you to assess the situation and figure out what to do next, including with your body. If you're getting a weird feeling about something, don't just make assumptions, check things out. Use your body's signals as an awareness tool, but don't jump to judgment until you've done your research and checked things out. Then once you have, then it's time for the final A, authenticity. Being genuine with yourself and your audience is the single best way to create a business that's true to you. Why? Because you're being true. While the masks we wear may protect us from others or protect others from us, if people never get to experience the real you, then it's kind of hard for them to fall in love with you. They're falling in love with the mask. And that creates a vicious cycle of pretending to be what you're not in order to keep other people happy, which only makes you more unhappy. So what makes you you? You are the single most important product that your company has to offer. I have been saying that since the very beginning of my teaching career online. People want to know you and do business with a real person. They chose you for a reason. So let your story, your values, and the impact that you want to create in the world drive your business. Don't be afraid to share those values and those stories. And then stay true to that. Show up in ways that are alignment with who you say you are and how you wanna be known. Stop compromising yourself and your integrity and draw a line in the sand. Now the first few times it may feel hard or awkward or even like you're spinning your wheels, but stay the course because it's worth it. Sometimes we just need to stay focused and remember, be true to yourself when nobody else will. Oh, be true to yourself. Stay true to yourself. The money may not always come from the place you expect, and you're definitely going to face disappointment in your business career. 
But staying true to yourself is hands down the number one way to experience the success that you've been looking for sooner rather than later. In our free Rising Tide Learning Library, you'll find a handy mini workbook to help you bring your business in alignment or back in alignment with what's true for you. Take the time to fill it out completely and you'll have some deeper insights into what needs to shift in your business to help you feel more successful. If you're ready for additional support, Creative Freedom Incubator Enrollment is now open. Together, we can help you build a business doing more of what you love and less of what you don't. Pop over to the website to learn more. Next time, we're talking about how to find a profitable niche for doing what you love. I hope you'll join me. And until then, for more inspiration and education to help you own your dreams without selling your soul, come see what's shaking over at lisarobinyoung.com. You know you want to.